Hello, and uh, welcome to another Daniel Lee plastering and rendering video. Uh, today we are, or should I say I'm on my own today, tackling a um, just one wall for a uh, very lovely builder, a friend of mine. Um, this wall is in particularly bad condition, so what the builder has done is actually uh, glued and stapled a reinforcement mesh to the over the entire wall and you can see here just about uh, I'm applying the first coat over the top um, it has been PVA'd um, many many times I believe, believe he PVA'd this particular one five times normally two two or three coats of PVA is normally plenty um, but a few more certainly doesn't hurt. And as you'll see later, this wall um, didn't suck in at all. So, so what PVA does, it doesn't, it, it doesn't only help the plaster to stick to the wall. It also will control the suction, so it'll stop the plaster sucking into the wall too quickly, uh, which allows you to get over the entire wall. Um, and then flatten the plaster at an appropriate speed. If the plaster was to dry out too quickly, some classic telltale signs you'll get um, cracking and, and shrinkage cracking um, occasionally, which can happen, especially with restoration work. Um, this can happen if you're going over old, very sort of old damaged walls, and if they're not sealed properly. Um, you'll notice the moisture will just get sucked right out and they'll just start cracking and flaking off if it's particularly bad. Uh, so yes, priming the wall is very important. finished flat, um, putting the first coat on and then I left this wall about 20 minutes to tighten in a bit before then flattening it with a speed skim that's a four foot speed skim that I'm using there I believe that's a refiner version of a refiner, of a refiner one it's a very nice one it's sort of a hard plastic speed skim that one and it's fantastic at just flattening the walls so uh, I'll go left to right and then up and down and that just really helps flatten out any sort of little lumps and bumps and discrepancies in the wall whilst getting rid of a huge chunk of the lines. Because I'm going over render mesh, it, it, it's basically render mesh, it's the plaster is actually thicker, a little bit thicker than you might use on a standard plasterboard wall. That's the reason for sort of a 20 minute wait time. Similarly to Artex, um, if you're going over Artex, you tend to, it tends to go on a little bit thicker and then your waiting times between coats are a little bit longer. The first coat really does want to pull in a bit. Um, so I've personally found it's very important to let that first coat tighten in which on this particular wall has taken, taken over 20 minutes, it's autumn, so it's not particularly warm. And then it's, it's taken a flatten, I'm just finishing the flatten now, and then once this flatten is done, I'll mix up a fresh coat of plaster for the second coat, which I will then apply the same way as the first. You also notice uh, I'm having to go around some wires in the middle of the wall. Um, they are the um, wall lights for the lounge wall. Um, the customer has got the screws in place there, that's all ready to go. And also the four screws in the corner are for the radiator, which is an original radiator. They don't want to lose those, so they've specifically asked me to keep those. 
I'm now mixing up the second coat. You see I'm just giving it another quick flatten with the trowel before applying the second coat. So I'm now applying the second coat, super quick, that's just how fast I am. <laughs> Uh, this coat goes on about half, well, not, not quite, I'd say you, you use about half the amount of gear as the first coat, or half the amount of plaster um, for this, so it's quite an easy way to measure. Although one bag of one bag of 25 kilogram bag of plaster does approximately 10 square meters. It's a very nice, easy calculation to make. Uh, this wall, I believe, is about, it's a bit over, it's not, it's not too big, it's quite comfortable for one man, about 12 square meters. The um, couple of sockets and wall lights and radiator fixings aside, it's it's a pretty pretty straightforward wall as walls go. So I'm just applying the second coat. The second coat's much uh, much easier than, than the first coat because you've already got a coat of plaster and you've flattened the wall a bit so the second coat goes on much much more smoothly. It feels quite nice, I quite enjoy getting the second coat on. Right now I've skipped ahead a little here so it's had uh, another speed skim and another, I've flattened it by this point, so I left it another 20 minutes before then giving it uh, a flatten, and then I left it another 20 minutes before giving it this wet trowel that I'm currently giving it now. And you see it's pulling in quite nicely now. Most of the lines are out. And at this stage, it's firmed in enough, you'll notice I've put, uh, I'm able to pull out the screw in the light fixing and go over it fully with the trowel. That, that gives it a nice and flat finish. And because the plaster is now firmed up, it, where it doesn't all block the hole up. So I can pull out those screws as I go over them to flatten the plaster nicely and then I'll pop the screw back in but I don't do that until this stage because it is incredibly easy when the plaster's a bit wetter to just completely fill that hole. And it's all too easy, even, even when you rise on the hole, to then lose it. I'm just cleaning out the sockets at this stage as I go as well. cleaning up the coving so I've now removed all the tape the protective tape and cleaning up the coving lines and I've started the second wet trail where I'm alternating directions so you, see, you may have noticed the first wet trail was up and down and the second wet trail is left to right I am now on the dry trail this is just the penultimate trowel going over it, just checking it it's allows you to check for any little discrepancies on the wall, any little hollers as you're going over it. It helps, it starts giving it a bit of a bit of a shine at this stage. You can see it's quite a good angle the way the light shines in through the lounge window. Um, it really quite highlights the the trowel lines, the trowel shines as we go as we go as I'm going left to right there, right to left. The lighting can have quite a significant impact on how a plastered wall looks um, because you can plaster a wall perfectly well, and then if the lighting hits it or if it's in a funny angle or a funny angle, it can make some walls. Um, look look quite different 
so they, it's recommended it's not always practical or possible but they do recommend you plaster a wall in the finished lighting that it's going to have and this will allow you to to see the wall in its in its finished true lighting see now I've removed those the radiator screws as I polish because uh, at this stage there's no chance of those holes filling up whatsoever so it's quite safe it's perfectly safe to just whip those screws out go straight over and then I'll pop them back in at the end and that is a one finished plastered freshly plastered wall they asked me to stop at that just above the door there because the the builder is going to do the decorating he's going to um, fill that nicely well I hope that was informative and helpful and thanks for watching and if you did enjoy it please subscribe <laughs>